What's up Zox fam? Now we're gonna be getting into the skill prioritization for all our current A ranks. Now with that, we went over the S ranks in the last video. So if you haven't seen that, definitely make sure you check that out. But we do have a crap ton more A ranks than we do than any other given rank in the game. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this. And we're gonna start out with Luvia Ray. Now Luvia Ray is going to be a one, three, four, two. Um, and the reason that this is is when you're actually looking at what Luvia can do um, the main thing she's going to be utilizing is going to be her s1 which is her normal attack uh, and with that normal attack when you follow up with the uh, three uh, which is going to be her first passive uh, this is going to be giving her extra attack bonus damage um, guaranteed opportunity to be able to crit and excess damage uh, when she's doing her ultimate uh, so it ends up being a thing that goes hand in hand and even when you get into her exclusive crime brand uh, she's also going to be gaining another ultimate, uh, which again emphasizes her normal attack, but it actually scales uh, what she's able to do in terms of now she's dishing out double normal attacks instead of it just being a singular uh, hit. Next up is Victoria, and Victoria is actually going to be a 2 1 4 3. Uh, and the reason that this is is because she's one of the, I think if I'm not mistaken, the only unit in the game that uses her own HP to emphasize a vast majority of her DPS. Uh, so, with that, you actually want to be emphasizing that as much as possible um, so that hence is going to be coming from the ultimate which is your two and then followed up by the normal attack damage that she does um, she actually has a pretty solid radius that she's able to cover um, and then your passive innately restores hp back to you um, but of course still pairing her with a healer is still really nice um, but she does have an exclusive crime brand where she gains another ultimate that allows her with the hp exchange uh to be able to deal bonus damage um, and then her normal attack uh, will also inflict the status effect white rose or rose so um that's pretty much that for victoria now with chameleon this is actually going to be our attack speed goddess uh with a two four three one setup uh, and the reason that this is is because again for what she does she's going to be helping your allies with their attack speed right um, and this is going to be really really important um, with each stack that she gives uh, it's going to increase their attack speed by four percent and can stack up to five times and it lasts the full duration of the battle uh, but then when you follow up with the four which is her second passive uh, this is also going to be giving an additional ten percent attack speed bonus for 10 seconds which makes them even faster so keep in mind this is going to affect dps output so this is why units like uh summer and chameleon is probably one of like the best pairings you could probably get to pop off because of how that unit is set up uh, and then with her exclusive crime brand uh for every 10 times mental sword deals damage all the catalyst gains six percent additional attack speed for set uh, for seven seconds so it just is highly emphasizing that aspect of her kit now, Hakate is actually going to be a one, two, four, three. Now, that's emphasizing the uh, attack damage that she can do in her S1, which is magic. Um, she has a pretty solid radius. It's not like too, you know, over the top, but definitely shifting into her uh, ultimate. You're getting that core damage. You're getting that burst panel uh, overall damage. So anyone on that panel is actually getting hit by this. Um, and then, of course, one of the biggest things I would say after you kind of work on her singular aspect, which she actually brings to a party is all allies are able to gain. 12.2% and it can actually go higher of uh, magic penetration bonus up to 18%, right? Uh, then with her exclusive crime brand, you are going to be able to then get a uh, extra tank. So that's just kind of one of the bonuses that she offers. Um, and this just scales off of her stats. Um, it's not really too relative to the remainder of her kit as you know it may be for some other characters, uh, but it is just an extra additive that she has that makes her super, super good. With Mr. Fox, he's actually going to be a three Three, two, four, one, um, and this is going to be emphasizing some of the amazing uh, buffs that he's able to do and debuffs. Uh, so he's able to actually uh, increase uh, the duration of break uh, on his uh, enemies for two seconds with his passive, his uh, first passive. Uh, and then when you look at his ultimate, he's able to also reduce uh, the damage of all allies up to I think thirty percent here, um, and also making them immune to control effects for six seconds. So he's like 
pretty freaking good. I mean, even when you get into his exclusive crime brand, um, you're going to also have, while Mr. Fox is on the battlefield, any ally center breaking enemies cores uh, gains 9% additional attack for 10 seconds. So he actually helps out your core breaking uh, damage as well. So uh, again, when you're looking out for what he does, that would be the uh, skill investment you would want to focus. Countess Chelsea is actually going to be a 2341. Uh, and with Countess Chelsea, she's going to actually have within her ultimate a summonable like glass panther um, that's able to actually block two enemies to get about 80% of her HP um, and it can stay for about 20 seconds right uh, now the thing is is that this might seem bad at first and it's just kind of one of those early game things but when you get to her exclusive crime brand uh, it actually uh, now allows the summon to be able to stay on the battlefield until the battle ends uh, and then with the dear kitty ability it will restore 40% of uh, citrus uh, or Citri's uh, max HP and petrify all enemies on a three by three square around Citri for two seconds. Um, and then, like I said, of course, with uh, the remainder of her kit, when you're looking at um, the next thing that she focuses, which is her first passive, uh, normal attacks of Countess Chelsea and Citri have an 8% chance to petrify the enemy um, hit for two seconds, and the effect has a 12 second cooldown. So this ends up being super, super like insane once you actually like really get her built up. Um, but that would be her skill investment. Now with Ariel, she's actually going to be a one, three, two, four. Uh, and with that, one of the biggest things that's important to her kit is going to be attack because of the fact that she scales off of that in terms of her heals. Uh, now the biggest thing is, is that when you're looking at her third or her first passive, um, it's going to be healing on a three by three square around her. Uh, so anyone within radius is just going to be healing uh, innately from her. Uh, and then when you look at her ultimate, uh, this is going to be creating the glimmer realm uh, which will allow you to have like this you know kind of beam just shoot down five times and it'll restore within that radius allies standing there uh, the cool thing is, is if you don't have an ally in there you could just swap them in and then they would still receive that healing it's not based on who's planted there it's an overhead effect right uh, now also with the exclusive crime brand uh, she will also gain an extra gleamer realm um, healing at about uh, 40% of what the current one is healing at. And once you get this up, it'll end up being half. So you'll essentially have one at 100% and then one at 50%. So it's just massive amounts of healing happening on the field at that point. Next up, we have Picasso. And Picasso is going to be a one, two, three, four. Uh, and with Picasso, um, one of the biggest things that she's going to offer, outside of the fact that she is able to do like a unique uh, like first hit and then a second hit um, that deals different variating uh, damage, uh, magic damage, to be specific uh she's also in her ultimate i'm um, going to be able to core break uh, like 100 percent a three by three around her at least one core uh, and then she creates something called the radiation field uh, and within that radiation field enemies will also um will take damage but then they'll also be slowed because of her mania intensify um that she actually has and then on top of that they'll be able to take increased damage um and it can stack up to uh 30 percent which ends up being kind of disgusting, to be honest. Uh, and then when you look at her crime brand, uh, enemies that die in the radiation field will create a secondary radiation field on its grid that deals 30% of the attack damage per second to all enemies on the grid for 10 seconds. So uh, she really is like super OP when it comes down to kind of getting that, like I would say kind of sort of like ripple effect like dlt ripple effect um so that would be her skill investment now with roleka she's actually going to be a two one three four uh, and she's going to be one of those unique units within the game that operates off of luck um so she's able to with her ultimate um roleka loads six lucky bullets um her next six attacks will be blessed with luck each dealing anywhere from 50 percent to 225 percent and actually can go all the way up to 450 percent of her attack damage uh so you you could actually see some pretty insane like dps out there uh it's just kind of pure uh pure chance at least like starting out uh and then when you're looking at like her uh first passive uh she is going to get a attack speed increase um and then each lucky bullet has a 15 percent chance to increase the lucky bullet's crit rate and crit damage uh and this effect can stack up to three times so that ends up being a super super op thing um and then even when you're looking at her crime brand uh the lower the limit of lucky bullets damage 
damage range is increased by 10%. And then the Lucky Roulette becomes a rapid fire of six lucky bullets. Um, the damage dealt by every bullet grows with the ultimate's level, right? Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty interesting setup, but that would be her skill investment. With 99, 99 is actually going to be a one, two, four, three. And I absolutely forgot that this is another unit, very much so like Victoria, that is able to use her HP to essentially you know, having an edge or advantage, right? Uh, so when we're looking at the very first thing, her normal attack is going to be uh, highly emphasized here because then when you use her ultimate, um, her ultimate is actually going to, at the expense of 50% of her current HP, she's gonna gain a 20% attack bonus that lasts for 13 seconds. And when she's in the incinerate status, all damage to her will be delayed for five seconds. Uh, she will not be able to restore energy. Um, and then even when you get into her first passive, she is able to, for every 10% of max HP loss, she gains an attack speed bonus, uh, and then she's also able to do increased damage when the enemy um, she hits is the same, and that stacks up to five times. So this actually makes her pretty good for uh, boss killing. Uh, and then when you look at her exclusive crime brand, 99 will not die upon sustaining fatal damage, but instead become invincible for six seconds. Uh, and this effect can only be triggered once per battle. So this is on top of what she already can do. So like I said, super, super OP. Next up, we got Ignis, and she's going to be be a 2134. Now, her ultimate is definitely going to be pretty important uh, because this allows her to turn um, or turning um, blaze into meteorite. So, uh, this is going to have a DLT effect, especially once you get uh, her. Uh, second passive unlocked, um, it will allow you to also, on hit of Meteorite, it will burn the enemy um, and deal magic damage. Now, keep in mind, the damage that she actually does is a cross effect, um, so it is actually pretty solid, uh, to be quite honest. And then, after you attack with the Blaze or Meteorite five times, she will summon an extra Meteorite, which does 100% of her attack uh, to enemies within run one grid. Um, and then, when we're looking at her exclusive Crime Brand, uh, while Overload Spark lasts, uh, each of Ignis' normal attacks has a 20% chance to summon one extra meteorite to attack enemies. So she's really emphasizing that aspect of her kit, but then you're seeing that uh, burn DLT damage that's coming. So, you know, it ends up being a really, really solid, uh, I would say kind of like exchange um, and how it actually turns into itself. So that's gonna be that for Ignis. With Iron, she's actually going to be a 3412, uh, and this is going to be emphasizing both of her passives first. Uh, and the reason that this is so important is because this actually affects her normal attack. Um, so when you're talking about the first one, uh, so every 20 seconds, enemies hit by Iron's normal attack are attached with eight stacks of electri um, electrocution. Um, and when they're in that electrocution state, uh, when they're hit by the ultimate, they will receive 30% extra damage. Um, and then also it will reduce one stack of elect uh, electrocution. Um, but then when you get into the second passive, when Iron attacks the enemy with electrocution, she turns her normal Normal attack into a two hit one um, so each hit dealing 68% of her attack right um, then you have her uh, intensify uh, or mania intensify so upon dealing core damage all allied centers gain a 15% physical penetration for 10 seconds uh, now the other thing is of course is where her exclusive crime ram uh, you're going to when electrocution is activated iron gains a 1% physical uh, penetration stacking up to 20% so this ends up being a huge aspect of her kit, um, which then will have you following up with investing in her normal and then, of course, in her ultimate. Now, with Cinnabar, Cinnabar is actually going to be a 2-4-3-1, uh, and this is a unit that is uh, really good at defending and giving shield efficiency. Um, so with the ultimate, he's actually going to be able to deploy a barrier uh, over a 3x3 three three square around um, her uh, and granting allies um, a percentage based off of the HP of shield per second, um, and that will last for seven seconds. Uh, now, of course, looking at the four, which is going to be the second passive, uh, after the battle starts, all our, her allies gain a 10% shield efficiency bonus, right? Uh, so that's kind of one of those things there that ends up being super, super crucial. Uh, and then when we look at the exclusive crime brand, uh, when pressure shield is triggered, all allies on the battlefield will gain a shield equaling to 50% of pressure shield. Uh, and pressure shield, if you did not see, 
is the passive here. So uh, before taking damage, Cinnabar gains um, a shield for five seconds. And now with the crime bread, it would actually give that to everybody. So that is actually going to be the investment. Now with Anne, Anne is actually going to be a three, two, one, four. Uh, and this is actually going to be uh, pretty important because when she's on the battlefield or during a battle, uh, she will automatically heal at ally center with the lowest HP percentage, making them immediately restore 140% of her uh, self attacks and HP. And the effect will last, or sorry, will have a 10 second cooldown, um, then followed up with her ultimate. Um, so this is where she'll break the limit, limit and heal an ally with the lowest HP uh, percentage within a diamond area around her, uh, restoring 90% of her attack HP every time. Uh, and this effect lasts for almost 20 seconds. Uh, so during which she cannot uh, automatically recover energy. Uh, and then when you look at her exclusive crime brand, uh, she will gain a new ultimate um, where she'll be able to actually shoot um, a shot at the target ally center, applying the uh, anesthesia, anesthesia uh, for six seconds. Um, for the duration, the center is out of action and immune to damage, uh, and they're going to be recovering 5% of max HP per second. Uh, so that can only be used once per battle, but it is actually pretty clutch. Now, we got one of my favorites, Wendy. Uh, she's actually going to be a 2 one, three, four. Uh, now with that emphasizing her ultimate, this is going to be, uh, and what people consider makes her a like baby version of Nox, uh, because she does spin on a complete circle, uh, where she is able to do uh, physical damage to enemies within range five times. Uh, then of course with her S one, that is going to be heavily used, um, for her to just be able to like, kind of, you know, maw, you know, like saw down, like, uh, enemies in front of her uh, then with her first passive every 10 seconds Wendy turns to her next uh, normal attack into dealing gr uh, damage in one grid uh, and then this does uh, physical damage four times so 40% uh, almost of her attack and that ability and then of course looking at her exclusive crime brand after moving Wendy can perform her ultimate at no cost immediately uh, and this effect has a 35 second cooldown uh, so you'll be able to actually again be able to have that lane coverage um, where you're using it once and then be able to use it again so that's that's kind of nasty. Next up, we have Kawakawa, and he's going to be a 2 3 one, four. Uh, And Kawakawa is actually, uh, I would say, again, pretty pretty viable, I would say. Uh, considering what he is able to do with the ultimate, he is able to give the protective beacon uh, for a target ally center um, that lasts the entire battle, which will allow them to gain 1% um, and up to 2% of their max HP every two seconds. Um, on top of that, when you're looking at the next thing with Kawakawa, it's going to be his first passive. So after Kawakawa performs, a protective beacon all protective beacons are activated and recovers the ally centers with the beacons uh, hp by 11 percent um which again is super super beneficial and then once you get that exclusive crime brand um after kawakawa performs protective beacon a shockwave will spread from the target grid immediately restoring 15 percent of the max hp uh, for all allies within a three by three square around that grid uh so keep in mind too one of the like i would say extra additives i do have a video up for him so make sure you check that out uh, but when he does um get his first shackle he then will also give himself a protection beacon so you don't longer have to cast that on him so he ends up being a really solid tank for those that want to use a tank now with horo horo is actually going to be a one two three four uh, and this is a unit that is actually able to uh both restore their own hp but then also get some extra scaling uh in uh defense and attack uh, so you're going to see in the first ability is just going to be your damage, you know, within a one to one um, around itself. Uh, then in the ultimate, um, you are going to be getting a core break. Um, and so you're temporarily decreasing damage. She takes by 30 percent and then able to deal 600 percent of her attack, physical damage and core damage to all enemies within range within that tile radius. Um, and then, of course, you have the first passive, which is going to be able to battle mark um, individuals. And once the mark is activated, it will reduce damage Horo takes by 13% and turns every third normal attack into sweep. Uh, so this is where that kind of makes the most sense because once sweep is activated, uh, you would then have for each enemy hit with sweep, Horo restores 2% of her max HP, and this uh, is effective to up to six enemies at a time. So it can hit multiple enemies, and you would be able to count that sweep multiple times, which ends up being like super broken. Um, and then, of course, with the crime brand, uh, uh, HP plus 10%, and sweep is upgraded to double sweep upon use. Uh, and this effect, uh, and this only takes effect after the talent is unlocked, right? So 
Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of kind of insane. Next up, we have Priscilla. She's actually going to be a one, three, two, four. Uh, and with that, uh, one of the biggest things with her kit is going to be emphasized off of her normal attack, right? Um, then her passive her first passive uh passive uh so priscilla's normal attacks has a 15 percent chance to fire magic bullets uh dealing 40 percent of her attack as extra physical damage um and then on top of that when you look at her ultimate uh, priscilla decides to end the performance with a spectacular gun show she pulls out two submachine guns and unleashes a hell of bullets uh for the next team for for the next 14 seconds her normal attack turns into a two hit one uh dealing hit damage or hits um dealing 40 percent of her attack physical damage during which she cannot recover energy um, and then when we look at her exclusive crime brand uh, when she performs the curtain call uh, she will summon a clown uh, to assist uh, which will also increase um, or deal 40% uh, of Priscilla's normal attack damage in each hit right uh, so that's really really important to I would say scale this unit up properly now Tetra is going to be a four three two one uh, and really primarily because of the fact when we look at what is going to be happening here um, this is actually going to be again based off of what she's doing with her normal attack uh, so Tetra's critical hit stuns enemies for 20 or uh, for two seconds uh, this effect has a 20 second cooldown um, now the other thing is is that when Tetra gains a uh, Four, she gains a 4% crit damage bonus after using her ultimate, uh, and this effect stacks up to five stacks and will last until the end of the battle. Uh, now, on top of that, when she is using her ultimate, Tetra moves um, to the target grid and attacks all enemies, dealing 500% of her attack damage uh, and physical damage uh, and one core damage. Uh, now, once you unlock the exclusive crime brand, um, your ultimate also will become a rewind. Uh, so what it'll do is it'll deal that 500% of attack damage and then um when you hit all enemies in the range she will then return to her previous location so it makes it a little bit more of an absent-minded thing when using her which is kind of nice next we got oliver now oliver is actually going to be a one two three four uh, and with oliver being that um it's really just emphasizing uh this ability called puppet uh now the puppet uh is going to be applicable not only from the s1 but also with the ultimate um as well and this does a certain an amount of extra uh, magic damage um, to the enemies um, and then of course once you land the puppet strings um, and you uh, apply puppet uh, you will then get additional magic damage with uh, the first passive and then the second passive uh, will allow uh, enemies to then receive more damage once they recover from the effect which is kind of insane um, and then with the exclusive crime brand when the puppet strings hits an enemy inflicted with the puppet mark uh, spread 40% of the damage dealt to all enemies inflicted with puppet mark so it's kind of almost like a shared dlt in a way but uh, or more of like a damage link if you want to kind of think about it that way next up we have sumire and she's a one three two four now uh with that being the case uh obviously her s1 is going to be pretty important um uh, but when we're looking at the next thing which is going to be her first passive here so every 16 seconds uh sumire will launch a six quick stabs to all enemy targets within two squares in front of her uh, and each stab will cause physical damage equal to 20% of her attack and will be marked with life, life elapse. Uh, life elapse will cause physical damage equal to 45% of her attack every second, uh, lasting for eight seconds. So that is actually pretty broken. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, her ultimate, uh, which will allow her to be able to core break. Um, but then it will also do damage equal to 250% of her own attack twice uh, to all enemies within a four grid in front of her uh right uh, and then of course we got to highlight the exclusive crime brand uh so it is able to increase the coefficients of all life elapsed on the field by 30 percent which means that they would be taking even more passive damage right so that ends up being really really op Next, we got Dolly. Now, Dolly is actually going to be a 2431. Uh, and the reason that that is is because Dolly actually has some pretty insane passive that uh, honestly affect her. Um, 
her normal attack. But the ultimate starting out, um, Dolly falls into a state of frenzy, gaining 100% attack speed and 20% normal attack damage increase bonus. And this ends after six normal attacks. So, I mean, that actually ends up being pretty important, right? Uh, then with her passive, after Dolly gains a 50% attack speed bonus accumulatively, uh, she gains an additional 10% increase to her normal attack damage and ball changes uh, to area damage. <laughs> so, which can attack all enemies in the target grid at the same time. Uh, and then with her last passive during the battle, Do Dolly will add an layer of mania imprint every 20 seconds and each layer of imprint will increase the attack speed by 10 percent uh, and then lastly with her uh exclusive crime brand uh she will actually um after dolly has accumulated and obtained 100 percent attack speed bonus she will gain an additional amount of normal attack damage uh, and ball will also then at that point become a ranged attack and do range damage uh and can attack all enemies within range at the same time uh so that's pretty much uh um, her skill investment. And lastly, we have the homie Wolverine, who is going to be a 3142. Now, uh, with that being the case, uh, when we look at the uh, first passive here, um, it's actually when uh, Wolverine's normal attacks hit, every time the distance between the hit enemy and Wolverine exceeds one tile, Wolverine's damage will uh, increase by 4%, and it can stack up to five times. Uh, then when you're looking at the... Uh, obviously the normal which is just going to be crossbow so you know he's going to be doing range damage uh which again kind of emphasizes that that is just going to be innately happening a lot <laughs> um then of course you have bear trap uh, so when wolverine arranges the bear trap on each tile when the specified range uh which lasts for 15 seconds after the enemy enters the grid the beast trap is triggered and the wolverine deals physical damage equal to 100 percent of its own attack to all enemies within range of the grid and, and stuns them for two seconds uh there there can only be a maximum of nine bear traps on the battlefield at the same time um, and then of course lastly with the lone howl passive uh, when there are no enemies within the nine square grid in front of wolverine uh, it gains a, a 10 percent attack bonus all right so that's pretty much going to be all of our current a ranks in the game uh, this is a little bit longer than probably the s rank video and probably going to be longer than the b rank video but it's just you know by far a lot more of these units but i hope that this video actually helps you guys let me know what you guys think and i'll catch you guys in the next one